How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the Tacoma Beast channel where as you all know, it's all about the taco. Today we're hanging out with Benny, known as Valley underscore taco. Make sure to go check him out. How's it going Benny? You ready Good, for man. the rig talk? I'm pumped. Let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Thank you so much for having us out here and to for bringing us out here. Uh, such an awesome place. We've been following you on Instagram for quite a while now and I've seen you're not scared to really use your truck, man. <laughs> nah. You gotta have fun with it, you know? Let's start with uh, you telling me what year is your truck and what model and... Yeah, it's a 2018 Toyota Tacoma uh, 4x4 TRD Off-Road Edition. It has the premium and tech package. Uh, yeah. And originally when you started, like, before you even bought the truck, what made you want to go with the Tacoma platform over all the other options that are out there? I've been a fanboy of the Tacoma ever since it came out. I mean, first gen Tacoma, especially the double cab, I was in love with it and it was like always been my dream truck. Second gen came out, dream truck. Third gen, dream truck. So I just, when I had the opportunity to buy it, finally bought it. And before this truck, what, uh, what car did you have? I had a 20, or sorry, 2001 Toyota Tundra V8. So it's a first gen Tundra. Awesome truck. I mean, Toyota trucks have always been like one of my favorite trucks and it's just solid. I mean, that thing, any, it started every time I, you know, asked it to start, never broke down on me. And it was just a solid platform. Cool, man. And what looks, before you started the build, because I, I was looking through your Instagram and I know that you started out stock, you started wheeling it almost yeah. like right away, man. Like, yeah. you didn't wait, you went straight for the trails. What look and functionality were you going for when, when building this? Man, quite honestly, I wanted the stealth stock look. Um, so I just wanted just like a, a mild lift, some big tires and things just, you know, just kind of things just spun out of control, started building it. Uh, I broke the plastic bumper cap on the back. So that made me want to get a back bumper. Um, and then, you know, I just wanted a front matching one and then everything just snowballed. I, I don't even remember what parts came next, to be honest with you. I think that happens to all of us, yeah, right? Seriously. We slowly start out and eventually it just starts to grow like crazy. Why do you call yourself Valley Taco on Instagram? Yeah, good question. Uh, so I grew up in the Valley, the original Valley, okay? So it's the San Fernando Valley, just outside of uh, LA. They're known for their dudes and their, you know, for sure. It's kind of like, a, what they portrayed in the in the movie Clueless. So that's basically a valley girl. And that's where I grew up, 818, and I've always represented it. So I'm proud to be from the valley. That's awesome. That That's a really cool story behind yeah. the team. Uh, let's dive into the truck. What suspension system are you running? Right now I have uh, King 2.5 coilovers uh, with 650 springs up front, uh, tuned by AccuTune. Uh, external resi, I got a full adjusters. In the rear I have 12 inch smoothies, also Kings. Full adjusters, also tuned by AccuTune. And uh, I got the shock relocation from Archive Garage. The leaf springs I have Dever U402 Stage 2s. And yeah, I think that's it for suspension. Did you start out with that suspension system from the start or did you kind of make mistakes and have to adjust? Uh, not really mistakes. So I started off with Icon. Um, I really like the Icon, uh, you know, the, the package deal that they had, which they called Stages. So originally I had a Stage 6 Icon, also 2.5s, external resis, full, full adjusters. When I wanted to go to the 12 inch shock relocation, um, they didn't really have too many options in terms of uh, out of the, you know, off the shelf uh, 12 inch shocks. So it was either King or Fox and I've always been a fan of King. So I went with King. Cool, man. And when you switched to King, I guess I was, I was checking out your truck and I saw you kept your upper control arms from Icon, right? Yeah, I kept them. I didn't, I didn't see a need to you know, change them. They've always been good to me with the Delta joints. AccuTune sells it just like how I have it. And I mean, if they're selling it, I'm, I'm with it. What about the lowers? The lowers, uh, it's, it's a stock lower. Um, I haven't changed it out. I am looking for some lowers in the future. Um, I definitely want to complete it and, and get uh, aftermarket lower control arms. Cool, man. Well, definitely the setup that you have right now is looking awesome. And I know that it functions. Oh, yeah. 
What about your wheels and tires? So I have uh, Ultra Wheels X103 bead locks. Uh, they're 16 by eight, negative uh, 25. One of the few companies that actually make a 16 inch uh, bead lock. Um, so I was able to stay with my previous uh, tire size, which is 315, 75, 16. Basically with the Toyo uh, MTs, uh, they're almost a true 35, so 34.9. They're one of the bigger 315, 75, 16s. Uh, I love the tire. I mean, I've got over 20,000 on them and, and they're wearing out really well. And on the trail, they're, they're awesome. I had that same uh, setup before. Yeah. I love it. I yeah. love how uh, they function and I love the stance that it oh, yeah. truck. It gives it such a nice beefy stance and uh, I love them and I actually do miss it a lot. I definitely, I prefer a little bit more tire than I do wheel and, and staying 16s, I think it makes it look like a bigger tire. Um, some people think I'm on 37s, but you know, yeah, I'll it's take a, it. A way bigger sidewall. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Like, two, like four huge balloons. I'll, I'll take balloons, man, yeah. How much PSI do you run out here, like when you're on the trails and, and rocky terrain? More yeah, so that's a really good question. Uh, people ask me that all the time. Um, it usually varies. With something like, something like Calico, I'd probably run off the road i'd probably put it at 12 so when it does cool down i'll be around 10 or 9. um it does get lower but i mean i'm on b-lock so i'm not really too worried about it uh it definitely grips the rocks a lot better for someone that does not have b-locks what uh, what would you recommend i would recommend staying in the 14 13 range uh, you always have to account for when the tire cools down because it is going to drop in psi or let's say you air down in the middle of the day and then you go to camp, it's gonna drop overnight. So you have to always account for that. Always double check your tire pressure. Yeah, make sure you're always checking and uh, always worry. I'm always worried when I go too low, I'm always worried of popping the bead because I have done that before. Yeah. It's just. Yeah, I've gone pretty low on my previous wheels, uh, the Stealth Customs. I mean, I've had that tire folded over and that rim or that wheel uh definitely held up i mean i've never had a problem with with the stealths it's just i wanted a little bit more trail security so i think beadlocks was the you know the, the right way to go you know i have beadlocks on my second gen and when i put them on i had that security yeah. <laughs> which is like you can abuse it a little more you can go lower uh i did pop my bead on the stealth custom series yeah oh did you the yeah. yeah and and it was not fun yeah i actually lost uh we were out in Moab a, a few weeks ago and I got in a really hairy situation and I actually lost the inner bead on, uh, on my wheel, but because it was a bead, a bead lock, it held the outer bead and I was able to, we, we were able to fill it back up and I mean, I drove probably 2,000 miles after that, so oh, no yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. pretty sweet. You're making me want to go with beadlocks. I'm not gonna lie. It's kind of. I mean, it's more maintenance. I mean, you got to make sure you're on top of the bolts. Um, obviously, it's not you know approved for highway use, so you kind of have to think about that. Um, of course, I only use it on off-road. You know, so that is true. Yeah. And with the way that I drive, I think that yeah. I'm gonna have to step down with the beadlock. Exactly. Now, going with the bigger tire size, you obviously have to re-gear. Yeah. What did you uh, re-gear to? So I have nitro gears, five two nines, uh, front and rear. Um, when I did re-gear, I added a ARB front locker. I mean, nitro is kind of the gold standard for Tacoma re-gearing, and I've never had a problem with it. We constantly get asked, like, is, is it worth re-gearing? Do I have to re-gear? Uh, I went up in size to like a 33. Mm -hmm. you know, what would you recommend you know, for someone that's just starting out, they went up in tire size to, to anything I mean, higher yeah. than stock, you know? I, it really depends on, on what tire size you've gone up to. I think anything over 34 is when they recommend the 529. Uh, and I agree. I mean, some people say it's a little bit too aggressive. If you talk to, you know, Jeep guys, they think that's way over, yeah, over gearing and, and they have to understand that our trucks are made different. They're, they're geared for more fuel economy. And plus with a six speed, it, it definitely changes the way that the truck behaves. So in order to get that kind of, you know, grunt back, I mean, you need to re-gear it. I mean, your truck, is struggling up steep grades if you're not re-geared and you know if you're on stock gearing heavy wheels heavy tires it's, it's just going to struggle when i wasn't re-geared 
I mean, I, I was constantly, you know, pushing fifth and fourth gear, never saw sixth gear. Once I went five two nines, right away sixth gear came back. Um, it didn't really open up until I, I OV tuned it. Um, my buddy at Modded by Phil OV tuned my truck and that definitely dialed the truck in. Regearing, you're still on stock tuning. Yep. So when you OV tune it, it actually, you know, it, it tunes it to your gearing, your tire size. So the fuel maps and the transmission uh, shifting points are actually in line with what you're supposed to be or what you're currently running. So it definitely opened up like the truck completely. It was a, a new life, I, I feel. Dude, that's what happened with me when like I re-geared it. I felt the truck become a lot nicer. Yeah. Uh, but like you said, it, it was still stock tuned. And then when we supercharged oh, it, man. <laughs> it was like, whoa, this it, it's almost like the way the truck should have been from the factory almost. Exactly. Um, ideally, you would want that, right? Talking about, you know, the gears and, and I saw you did a little a nice mod on the differential. Yeah. Which I also did myself and I, and I love it. Talk to me about the, the diff breather mod that you did. Okay, yeah, so that was actually one of the first mods I have I ever did on the truck. It's super cheap. I bought all the pieces online on Amazon and did the mod myself. I, I tucked it right behind the taillight and I've never had a problem since. I mean, I think it's probably one of the first mods everyone should do because it's, it's easy and it's cheap. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I have the same thing. It's like sitting right off the taillight. We did it right before the Pony Express. Just yeah. We didn't know we were going to do anything, you know, where we were going to need it. We're like, hey, we might as well do it. You know? Yeah, it, safe exactly. Safe. I mean, water, axle high, axle high. I mean, that's not that's not really that much, you know. So crossing into water that high and then sucking it into your, your you know, rear axle. I mean, that's that's asking for trouble. So, you know, again, a cheap and easy quick mod. I think it should be people's first mods once they get the truck. I agree with you, man. Let's talk about your armor. Oh, yeah. uh, what are you rocking up in the front? Okay, so on armor, I have RCI. I actually have full steel skids front to back. I got REI lower control arm skids, also steel. And then I got their gas tank steel skids. And uh, your front bumper? My front bumper's from Brute Force. Um, my buddy Billy out in, in Fresno, I actually met him through Instagram, uh, hit me up. He was planning on redesigning his third gen bumper. Thought I was in the valley, I guess they also call Central California, they have a valley over there. So he thought I was local, smoked him on the phone. I, I literally talked to him for over an hour, super cool guy. I was like, let's do it. Kept my truck for a few weeks and, and that's the end result right there. Well, that's awesome, man. It yeah. looks really, really good. Yeah. Uh, what about for your back bumper? Same thing, brute force. Um, he's had that bumper quite some time. Um, both front and rear bumpers, full steel. I've banged them up on everything and and from pretty high distances, and and they've taken the abuse. I mean, I've I've never had an issue with them. I've always trusted them. I kind of use them as a little check uh, when I'm when I'm wheeling. If I hit it, that means I'm too close. Back up. I don't care. It's a brute force bumper, so it, it'll withstand anything. That's awesome, dude. It looks really good too, man. And like driving, like coming up here, I was looking at you from the back and I'm like, man, it looks really <laughs> cool, especially with the tubes. Like, the yeah, side. yeah. So I was not, a, I was kind of iffy about the side hoops. I mean, that's the way he makes his bumpers. And quite honestly, I mean, I mean, if you take a look at the truck, it has scuff marks on there. So I've used them and, and it's definitely been more of a, a, a lifesaver than, than, you know, some people think it's an eyesore. I really love it. I think it's probably one of the most, like, it's my favorite part of the rear bumper is those side hoops. I think it makes it unique and, and it, it's, it's very practical, so. Definitely an original touch to it. Yep. I like it. Let's talk about your sliders. I peeked under there and I saw how completely scratched they are. They're wide. <laughs> Yeah, so I have DeMello sliders, the hybrid sliders. One of the first things I ordered, I wanna say I ordered it even before I ordered the truck. I already knew I was getting a Toyota Tacoma. I knew that the first things, you know, the first mod I wanted to do was sliders. There was probably like a six week lead time. So I put in the order, got the truck, waited. One of the first things I put on and it's probably the best thing that I put on the truck because it, it definitely elevates the type of wheeling that you can do. You know, it, it gives you that nice, you know, comfort knowing that you're not gonna bash your door into a rock and you got something to slide on. 
I use it all the time. Um, you know, I use it to pivot and turn in tight like places. I use it to slide down, you know, rocks. It just comes in super handy. And I, I mean, as you can see, I, I, I use it. It's not, it's not a showpiece. It's not a step. Uh, I use it to, to make sure that I don't hit my body. Now, I know you're, you used your, your Tacoma a lot, like stock form. Mm -hmm. um, and you had your skids and your sliders, right? I always tell people like to start out, you don't need all the crap that we have on our truck. You technically just need those two things. Like obviously you need a few more things, but those two main things will get you on the trail to where you're nice and safe and you know you're not exactly. going to destroying everything. Right? Exactly. So I think with sliders, um, obviously, I, I mean, aside from like lift and tires, lift and tires will get you places, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. but are you going to get to these places and not have any body damage on your rocker panel? You might, you might not. But if you have sliders, at least you have that peace of mind. It's better to have it than not have it, right? And it definitely, again, it elevates the type of wheeling that you can do. Um, you know, you don't want to go out here in Calico without any sliders because you'll just end up bashing your, your body and, and that's not going to be a fun day. It's going to be a long, quiet ride home. That's an expensive fix. That's, that's a quite expensive fix. All right, man, let's move towards the back. Um, what bed rack do you have? So it's from Avid Off-Road. Um, it's their bed basket. So it's basically two bars and a removable basket that holds up uh, to a 35 inch tire. It still lets me utilize my full bed space. Um, it's, you know, the basket sits above the bed line. So I pretty much have the space, uh, you know, from the bed line down. And it, it, I think it's pretty unique. Um, not a lot of people had it when, when I first bought it. And I think a lot of people agree that it's a pretty cool looking setup and I, I see a lot more out there now. I like it because you're not top heavy, you know? Yeah. You stay, like for example, with my Overland bed rack in my tent, any little move, <laughs> yeah. it's like the whole truck is, you know, which is, it's two completely different setups, right? Exactly. It's more for like long road trips around, you know, on, on nice gravel roads, like, but you're going for miles and miles and camping and doing all that sort of stuff. Yours is more for like a rocky terrain exactly. uh, setup, which that's what we did to ours recently, which I can <laughs> go wheel with you. Yeah, so when I order the bed rack, um, they usually put like their name on the side. They have like a little plate. I asked them to leave it off because I, I had this vision that I wanted to add some mounts, you know, for rotopacks. And I also had my water port that I wanted to add. And I think it was, you know, to me, unless it was like a molly type of of panel um, having these bar clamps were a lot easier and I found some you know on Amazon and I was able to mount my rotopacks uh, water port had a bar mount that you know perfectly mounted to my to my basket and it just really utilized uh, all the space on my basket and, and and saved a lot of space that would otherwise be inside my bed Anything else that you might be missing uh, that you have attached to your molly panels or uh, anything else in the bed rack? Yeah, so on the bed rack, um, I have a high lift on there. I have uh, my Baja Design S2 uh, Sport uh, dust lamps. And I think that's about it. Well, I'm trying to think if you're missing anything. I do know that you have boxes down there. Like when you go, like what's your camping setup like? Yeah, so. Uh, as, as like, you know, packing up food. Um, you know, tent and all that stuff. Yeah, so I have, I basically, I try to pack as light as I can. Uh, I have a box that's just full of just random camping stuff, utensils, you know, plates, cups, uh, that I always keep handy, always keep stacked and, and ready to go. And then I have another bin that I sometimes put my sleeping bag, and you know, if it's gonna be a longer trip, I have a sleeping bag, sleeping pad, I have a, an extra tent. If it's gonna just be a kind of a quick overnighter, uh, I have another bin that's just full of my spare parts. And you know, that's kind of either in the bed or I fold down my back seats and I put it back there. I noticed that you did what I did, which was go with a solid dry shaft. Yep. But then you went back to the two piece. Yep. Tell me why and... Uh... Yeah, so um, I messed up my drive shaft uh, and at my Moab trip a couple weeks ago, basically just grounded on on some rock had vibes at like 15 so i really needed a new drive shaft uh, i tried asking around in town and no one wanted to touch a toyota drive shaft 
reached out to Tom Woods, who um, they're out in you know Ogden, Utah, uh, which is about four hours from uh, from Moab. I talked to Sean, and he was like, "I can get one over there, you know, shipped to your buddy's Airbnb. It'll be there tomorrow." And unfortunately, UPS, you know, messed up that package. We ended up driving over to Tom Woods, slapped on the one-piece drive shaft, and it drove it drove really really nice. It was it was great. And it's a beefy drive shaft. Uh, but I started to notice that I had a little bit of a humming uh, over, you know, 70 miles an hour. And I talked to a couple people. They said it was probably because of the one-piece drive shaft. Uh, so I went back to the two-piece. Uh, I had it custom made. Uh, it's the it's a little bit longer than stock, and and it's a thicker wall tube. And it's been perfect since. And that was made by California Drive Shaft. Cool, man. It looks solid there. When you originally messed up your other drive shaft, how did you do that? So we were on cliffhanger uh, out in Moab and I was trying to take a line that I probably shouldn't have taken. Uh, started sliding off to the, to the side and I was basically sitting on top of my drive shaft. So every time I, I try to move forward or backward, it was just spinning on it. And it was at to the point where it was, it was about to go. So uh, we ended up doing a recovery that took quite a long time. I was, you know, it was, it was a really bad situation where I was almost about to slide off this rock. Uh, fortunately, I had really good guys, really smart guys. My buddy's an engineer, uh, figured out a way to get me down. We got down. I was like, hey, I don't want to risk doing the rest of the trail on this messed up drive shaft. So we ended up turning around and, and, and you know, heading out the way that we came in because that's the only way you can go out. So, Damn, dude. <laughs> I'm hoping that I'm, I'm still crossing my fingers that I don't mess up the dry shaft. <laughs> I've seen so many dry shafts that end up like, um, you know, like imagine like a Coke can. That's how mine looked. Yeah, it looked it looked twisted. It looked like a a, a really bent up tootsie, uh, twiz, Twizzler yeah. candy. Yeah, it was it was pretty bad. So Benny, what does uh, your recovery look like? My recovery gear? Yeah. So I have a worn M8000 uh, synthetic winch up front. I have a Factor 55 flat link. Uh, I have a worn uh, fair lead. I usually carry some soft shackles. I also have the Factor 55 rope retention pulley. Uh, we've used that quite a few times. I mean, with having a M8000, it doesn't pull, uh, you know, as strong as, as some of the, the other, win uh, other winches. And hooking up a pulley or any type of snatch block definitely, you know, makes your winch a lot stronger. I highly recommend anyone, you know, wheeling to, to act, you know, at least have a snatch block in their in the recovery bag. It, it helps a ton. And, you know, when you're when you're going in these moderate and hard trails, you're always bound to break something. What are some parts that you and your friends like kind of like the always take uh, on the ones that you always take on every trip? For IF, OK, so for IFS Tacoma, I mean, you definitely I'm, IFS anything, I think. Uh, a CV axle is is one thing that you should you should always uh, uh, carry around. Another weak point on these trucks is, are the tie rods, so I always carry like at least two in my truck, inner and outer. Um, other things too, I carry a lot of different bolts. I buy bolt kits, you know, uh, that that usually come in a kit at like Pep Boys. I carry fuses, uh, some extra fluid, things like that. I think is is at least the, ba the basic stuff that you should be carrying around on, on these type of trails. Dude, I think that's great advice. That's really, really good. All right, so for someone that's just starting out, think back when you were, you know, back in 2018 <laughs> when you just uh, bought your truck, what would be the three main recovery things that you would take on your on your? Wow, trail? okay. Uh, three main recovery like items. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I would, I would definitely, I mean, like a winch, like does that count? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I would highly recommend a winch. So get, getting your truck to the level where it can hold a winch. It can hold a winch. Um, you know, I go out by myself. I know some people don't like going out by themselves, but I feel comfortable going out by myself. I know how, knowing how to use a winch is one thing. Um, you know, so I, I definitely would recommend a winch. It's probably, I mean, if you're starting off, it it's, might not be a reasonable thing to do but I think eventually you want to be at the at the level and 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 kind of always thinking about getting that winch uh, soft shackle or d-rings 
uh, I think is, is pretty important. You need some way to connect a winch. So either you're gonna winch yourself out or someone's gonna winch you out. You need something to, to hook up to. Another thing too is probably like a, a, a toe strap of some sort. So if you need to get tugged out um, or you need to tug someone else out, at least you have that in your truck, which I also, I also carry around. And then maybe something to lift your vehicle to change the tire. Yeah, high lift, yeah, high lift, definitely. And once you get lifted, um, the, those stock bottle jacks that Toyota gives you, it, it's pretty much pointless. Yeah, so high lifts, I've, we've used it to lift up the truck to change tires. Um, I've also used it to, uh, you know, we've used it to lift up a truck to turn the steering wheels because it was completely jammed. Yeah. So it doesn't, you know, it's just not for changing tires. You can use the high lifts for a lot of different reasons. It's pretty sketchy. Yeah. Uh, so you have to be careful, but I mean, you know, use things, use your head, try to use a base if it's, if it's soft ground. Um, I also have something, it's called a jack jaw that connects to the, to the lifting uh, part so you can hook it up onto your sliders and it keeps it from from slipping out cool man now between because every t we also have a high lift and every time i have to use it i'm like oh my god <laughs> um between a high lift and a bottle jack oh what I, are your thoughts on a bottle jack no nah, yeah it's completely different things uh I, I just because I have more experience with a high lift and I kind of know how to use it, I would, for me personally, I, I prefer a high lift. Um, you know, I know the little, you know, tricks that you need to do. Like if you're gonna lift it on the side of your, your truck and it's, it's near the door, uh, we always open the door, make sure that it, it doesn't jackknife into the door. Cause if we've seen too many people where it jackknifes into the door and it, it, and it just puts a nice big dent in the door, so. Uh, if you're gonna lift it by the door, I recommend keeping it open. Um, so if it does jackknife, it'll jackknife, you know, into the cabin, not into the door. That's actually great advice. Yeah. I know your headlights are aftermarket. Let's yep. talk about your headlights and any other small little upgrade that you've done to the vehicle. Yeah, so for my headlights, I have the Alpha Rex, um, I think they're called the Lux series. Uh, it's basically the, the you know, the, the newer Tacoma look with the daytime running lights um, has the sequential uh, turn signals uh, it's i love it i i think putting that has you know changed the look of my truck it's it's updated it other cosmetic pieces one of the first things i did i put the trd off-road grill on there uh, it's oem uh, mine's a 2018 so i had to get the the sensor um, to work for my taillights i got the oem trd pro taillights. Uh, I recently changed it out. I was using the stock taillights that came with it. I just wanted a little change. Uh, I know it's not a huge change because everyone and their mama has TRD Pro taillights, uh, but I've always digged the look. So, I, you know, I, I thought might as well change it. And, and I changed that maybe a few weeks ago. Uh, I also trimmed my OEM fenders, my fender flares. Uh, it definitely needed more clearance for my 35s. I you know, I think I tell everyone who wants to go 35s or, or bigger that if you really want to wheel your truck, you're going to need a, to trim your fender flares because it's just going to catch. So I was too chicken to do it myself. I uh, found a shop out in Fresno, 559 Motorsports. Uh, I saw them on Instagram. I totally dig their work and I think they nailed it. I mean, people think that it's OEM. Uh, people think that it's aftermarket, uh, but it's basically like it, it's an OEM trimmed fender flare and I think it's it looks really sweet. Dude, it definitely does. I think I might end up doing that to my truck. It also makes it look taller. It does, yeah. It adds a little it adds a little space in, in your wheel well, so. Yeah, it looks super nice. All right, let's talk about your light setup. What do you have up in the front bumper? I have Baja Designs S8 20 inch uh, as my light bar. I have Baja Design Squadron Pros for my fog lights. Uh, and in the rear, like I mentioned before, I have the Baja Design S2 for my dust lights. For the engine bay, what sort of mods have you done or added any accessories? Yeah, so I have a TRD drop-in filter uh, that's connected to my Safari snorkel, uh, which I have a snorkel upgrade pre-cleaner up top. I have an ARB dual compressor uh, that helps me air up after the trails and also hooks up to my front locker. Uh, I also have a Switch Pros uh, that's on a power tray 
completely wired up by my buddy at Modded by Phil, super clean work. Uh, I think that's about it. I'm assuming that, you know, you have onboard air, you have t that tied to a front locker. You must have a front locker. Oh yeah, yeah. So when I re-geared, I put a front locker in there. It was one of the things that uh, I knew I wanted to do, um, which kind of made it a little bit longer for me to re-gear, just because I knew I had to add the expense of putting a front locker in there. But definitely, I mean, the type of wheeling I do, I, I definitely want to be fully locked in there. And it's always great to do those two together. Like, I, I feel like those go hand in hand. Yeah, so when I got the rear gear done, uh, the shop that I got it done through basically didn't charge me to put a front locker in because they said it's the, the same amount of work. They're gonna take out the differential. Um, and yeah, so it, it, it was a no-brainer that I was gonna put a front locker in when I re-geared. I, I actually did the same thing because like since they have to open it up right to re-gear I put the front locker in but I didn't have any uh, I had onboard air but it was it was different like it was just a portable compressor. Oh yeah. So I had the locker in always <laughs> in the front but never fully connected. Just kind of left it there. Don't recommend that. Before. Yeah that's yeah. kind of yeah. <laughs> Not recommend you do that but uh, it was just a small time frame before we connected. Yeah I mean they, they didn't hook it up I hooked it up myself. Um, they basically put the fitting on and I um, actually, I actually had at that time I had my buddy, uh, my buddy's shop put in the line just because I didn't want it to leak on me. Uh, I know they're notorious for for having a leak and trying to find an air leak. You know, it's just it, trying to hunt it down can be kind of a headache. So I went to the pros originally when I when I got the front locker put in. Uh, so I had them wire. Uh, put the airline in. Yeah, dude, and it gives you a peace of mind having a front locker. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's times uh, that I probably would have need to winch myself out if it wasn't for a front locker. So Benny, for the interior man, uh, what mods have you done? Uh, for interior mods, uh, I put in a screen protect uh, for my gauge cluster. Uh, it basically brought the gauge cluster back to life. I had a bunch of scratches from, you know, wheeling and getting it dusty and then wiping it. Uh, so right now it looks like it's it's brand new, you know, out of the factory. I also have the dash multi-mount kit, uh, so I could mount some ram balls on there and and mount my walkie-talkie. I can mount my ultra gauge, which I use to monitor my trans uh, transmission temperature. Uh, I also mount my little Garmin inReach on there, and I have a Hondo garage, I believe it's called, uh, phone mount. I also have the Desert Does It seat jackers, which took a lot of pressure off my lower back. It makes the angle of the Tacoma seat a lot more bearable. These Tacoma seats feel super flat. The floorboard is meant for clearance, so you're sitting in a more flat position in the, in the seats. So this kind of lifts up your, your legs and, and puts a little, or eases the pressure off your back. So it comes in super clutch on these super long drives that I do. Uh, I also have the Molly panels for the center console. I mount uh, various things on there. I have my flashlight, I have uh, some utility knives, uh, put an extra walkie-talkie on there. So how long has it taken you to get your truck to where it is right now? So I've had the truck for a little bit over two years. Um, I'd say the biggest jump I had was in the first year and after that was just adding the little kind of accessories to it so for the main part i'd say about a year and a half is is pretty much where i have it in terms of the major transformation the most recent one that i did was a shock relocation uh, so i'd say two years is probably where where i have had it like 100 percent dialed and what would you recommend for somebody that's just starting to like as far as like timing themselves, right? What would you recommend? I recommend to take your time. Um, I'm for, I was fortunate enough to be able to, to do this in a, a pretty short time span. Uh, I'm a big believer in you know building the truck the way you want to do it. And this truck is basically how I envisioned it. Um, you know, I didn't put anything on there that I didn't like or I didn't you know believe in the product. Uh, so I think taking your time, doing it right, doing it right the first time, I think is important. So if you're kind of on the fence and not sure, and you're just trying to piece things together, I think you might want to take a step back and, and kind of figure out what you really want and, and how you envision the truck to be in, in terms of the final product. I like that advice. Yep. Now, um, where it's at right now, 
How much have you invested in the truck? I don't even know, to be honest with you. Yeah, too much. I think too much is, is, is probably the right answer. Uh, it's definitely a lot more than I was anticipating. So, you know, it's, it's, I can't even give you a ballpark figure, to be honest with you. I could have probably bought a Raptor for sure. <laughs> would you recommend it? Like, would you do it again? If I had to do it again, I would do it again in a heartbeat. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, again, this is my dream truck. I built it the way I wanted, I wanted it built. Like I said, I've always wanted a Tacoma. And every piece on that truck is something that I, that I wanted to put on or something that I, I really enjoyed. I don't have anything on my truck that I don't like. Um, and I just don't, you know, I, I honestly don't throw anything on my truck just, you know, just, just to throw it on. So that truck, the way it's sitting right now is how I want it, how I envisioned it and how I dreamt it. Dude, that was beautiful. Yeah. That was great line. That was a great line. I had to wait for the air to <laughs> take it. There's a lot of people that are coming into this hobby. If there was one thing that you would recommend to them, what would it be? Seat time. I think nothing replaces seat time. You can have the most decked out truck with the badass, the, the best mods on there. You can have the highest lift, the biggest tires, but if you don't know how to drive it, it's no good. So my recommendation always whenever someone asks me is 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 seat time nothing replaces seat time so you know any chance you get someone invites you wheeling take it you know it's you'll start it'll be recognition you know you'll see you'll you'll see the trail you'll be like oh i've seen this before i know how to tackle this i've i've been off camber before this bad i know that it's not that bad i know how to get out of this so it, it just makes you more comfortable, more confident. So I think seat time is, is irreplaceable. Now, I know that you're always pushing your limits. Like um, you go through some gnarly trails, man. I've seen pictures where you're just hanging off of like two huge boulders and your truck is like balancing on itself. How do you know like to push your limits where you're not gonna flip the truck over? That's a good question. I mean, there's probably times where I thought I was gonna flip it over. Um, again, I think, you know, having seat time, you'll, you'll start feeling comfortable knowing your truck, you know? So I know my truck probably better than someone, for instance, driving a Jeep with a shorter wheelbase. So I know my tipping point. Uh, I know kind of what feels sketchy enough for me to say, hey, I need to back up and reset or, you know, or oh, I got this. I know that, you know, it does feel tippy, it feels sketchy, but if I move my wheel this way and get it positioned this way, I'll be fine. So, you know, I, I, I think just knowing your truck and, and spending a lot of time behind the wheel is, is the best thing you can do. So what's next for your Tacoma? Retirement. I'm done, man. I got the truck where I want it. I, I put every mod that I could think of. Uh, people ask me if I want to go 37s and I'm like, no way. 35s are a big enough headache. Um, I love, you know, the look of the 35s. There's, you know, no reason for me to go 37s. Um, people ask me if I'm going to solid axle the thing and I'm not interested in doing that. You know, I, I take my truck out anywhere I want and I feel that it's completely reliable and I have it exactly the way I want it and I don't think I want to touch it. So Benny, I see your shocks are super clean, dude. They don't look dirty at all. Do you actually wheel this thing? No, I only do it for Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, I do, man. Of course I do. Come on. that about wraps it up for this video i hope you all enjoyed this truck as much as i enjoyed filming it and documenting it for you guys benny thank you so much for having us out here hey man thanks to tacoma beast for coming out if you guys want to see more of my content make sure you follow me on ig valley underscore taco if you guys enjoyed this build make sure to hit that like button if you haven't already subscribed make sure to do so we noticed that 80 percent of you guys keep watching our videos but are not subscribed it helps us out a ton Please hit that subscribe button and we will see you in the next video.